Hello everybody, welcome. Um, yeah, I've just made some, um, well I call these, I call them kitchen bowls. Um, one and three quarter pounds, eight and a quarter inches Hang on, let me just check that, make sure I'm right there. Yeah, eight and a quarter inches wide, made to a gauge. So, yeah, these are all good. The beauty of working to a gauge, isn't it? You get them all the same. Well, they need to be the same because one is going to fire on top of the other in the kiln. So it's absolutely, crucially important that they are the same. And um, anyway, uh, eight and a quarter width and three and a half in, in height, three and a half inches in height. All that is remains for me to do with these is to put a pouring lip onto them because I put a pouring lip. So why don't you join me as we put pouring lips. It's going to be a short clip I think because anyway I'm just going to move this down here. Let's see if we're in the picture. Okay I'll just start and we'll just talk about it. Yeah, I, I sometimes I throw these on the wheel and I put the pouring lip on there and then and then lift them off. In this case I haven't done that, I've thrown them first and I'm now coming to put the pour, going to put the pouring lips onto them. So pouring a pouring lip is, is an important thing to know how to do because a lot of things in pottery have pouring lips, don't they? Especially pitchers, jugs, certain kinds of bowls like these. Um, well, a teapot has a kind of pouring lip, doesn't it? It has actually a spout. But um, well, what we actually do when we put a pouring lip on, or how I do it anyway, it's not a case of just distorting the shape of the bowl so it sort of it goes to a point that's not the idea the idea is to extend the clay just at that point where you are where you want the pouring lip but nowhere else okay I'm going to bring the camera in down here and let's 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 do it together that's the best thing enough talk leech you get on with it <laughs> Well, picture a picture's worth a thousand words, isn't it, as they say? Or a moving picture, I suppose, in this case. So I'm gonna try to get that fairly let's concentrate on that one on the end, so I'll keep him zoomed in there. Okay. So now you're gonna need you're gonna need your water pot just over there. So what are we gonna do? Right. What we're going to do is put two fingers either side of where we want to have the the pouring lip. Okay. Now, well, why do we do that? Let's imagine we didn't do that. Let's just say, okay, we're just going to pull the clay out. Well, that you see would cause, the, in fact, the whole bowl to uh, deform and go completely out of shape if we just pulled just in one spot there. So. First of all, we're going to wet our, our finger. We're going to put two fingers on either side, like that. We're going to put this finger inside between the two, like this. Okay. And we're just going to start with a sideways motion, like this. Just left to right, like this. Gentle pressure. Okay.
let's have a look at it, see what we've got so far. Alright, so we have maintained the integrity of this roundness here. And all we have done is pulled out this bit here. This is because clay is made up of platelets. And the clay, the platelets, they slide over one another. So what we're in fact doing here is causing a sliding or an ex this extending. Okay, gradual pressure, slowly pulling out, wiggling finger side, wetted finger side to side like this. Okay. Now what I'm what I'm doing when I'm doing this, I'm trying to see that that's been extended out nicely, but that this here stays like a complete circle. Alright. Okay. I think that's just about that's just about it. So let's move the camera along. Okay, let's just do let's just pull it back a touch. Oh you don't need to be in quite as much as that, do we? Let's let's do those other ones. So you wet one finger. These fingers you don't need to wet. You just they just they just go there on on either side. They are they are. This is a supporting role that they're doing. They're supporting the rest of the shape, maintaining the integrity of the shape, these two fingers, okay? Meanwhile, this finger in, the, in between causes the clay platelets to extend and Now I just try to get the shape a nice uniform shape. Um, sometimes it's not a bad idea just to to wait a little while before you pull these so the clay has had a chance to just stiffen off a little bit. It can just make it, and I recommend that you do do that when you do your pouring lips. Just perhaps just, you know, give them 15, 20 minutes before you, before you pull them. This one, it, this one is feeling a little bit stiffer. This is feeling a little bit better because this was actually the first, the first one that I threw. So this one has probably been here for half an hour. I'm guessing. Just stiffening up. Right. Here's a good tip. Whenever you do a full lip on anything, like a, a pitcher, a jug, or a bowl. When you do it, it looks nicely defined, the shape, doesn't it? But you'll find that as it dries, the pot, you see, is, is, is shrinking and contracting. So as it dries, that nicely, clearly defined lip that you've pulled, it's, it begins to lose that very slightly. So, good idea, just come back a little bit later on, while they're still soft, and just crispen them up in it again, you know what I mean, with your finger, just to get them. Get them back to where they, to where they were. I'm going to hold that up to you. I'm hoping that you're going to sort of get a bit of a sideways uh, view on them. 
Alright. That's those guys. I've got I've got a couple more to do. Now these pouring lips, because they are I'm doing them on a rolled rim. Um, so the clay up here is a bit thicker than what it would not normally be. Okay, nice sideways movement like this, left or right, you see. A little bit of downward pressure, but sideways. You got to, you know, you got to ease the clay. You can't just jerk it. Ease it. So that those, so that those platelets of clay um, you see that? You get the idea of the shape. I mean, do them to how you feel comfortable. You don't have to do them exactly the same as mine. But I mean Think of practicality, okay? A bowl like this is a very functional item, isn't it? So you want to think of, imagine you had, imagine you had four, five, eight, half a dozen eggs in here and you were, uh, you know. <laughs> no, I wasn't playing a drum. <laughs> Beating the eggs. Beating them up, okay, and then we've got the frying pan. So you've got to pour it all out through this pouring lip into the, fr into the frying pan. Into the pan. So all of those eggs have got to funnel through that spout. That's a likely scenario, isn't it? Using using the, um, a likely scenario for the possible use of this kind of bowl in the kitchen. But I'm sure you can think of many uses for such a bowl. Um, you know, uh, perhaps you, you might have a ladle, you see. Now if you have a nice ladle in here, the ladle, the handle of the ladle would would lie here in the in the pouring lip, wouldn't it? It, it? That that would that would look good, wouldn't it? With the with the um, the handle lying there, nice ladle. You've got some nice. Maybe you've got some gazpacho soup. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it's a hot summer's day. Oh, it's nice to think of a nice hot summer's day, isn't it? In this bleak midwinter. Um. Yeah. Some nice, refreshing, cool. Gaspacho soup waiting to be ladled out. Made of organic tomatoes, of course, and organic garlic and all of that. None of this pesticide rubbish. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so pouring lips. Have a go at them. And Try, can you, can you see with these how the integrity of the, s of the circle of the bowl, of the shape of the rim has been maintained and the, the pouring lip extended out only there between my fingers. Okay. That's the... That's that's what I that's you know that's what I think to myself anyway. Probably somebody else has got a completely different slant on it. <laughs> no doubt. Of course they have, but you know. You're li you're listening to my clip, so I'm telling you the way I do it. Anyway. Have a go. Um 
Yeah, visit visit our website, simonleachpottery.com. And you can also find us on Facebook, believe it or not. Who isn't on Facebook these days? Dear, oh dear. I have to sometimes think to myself, is this a good thing or not? I just, sometimes I'm in a mixed mind about it. But anyway, it's a good thing if you want to show people how to do something. And I try and relate it a little bit to food, cookery and pottery, which are of course all very nicely interlinked, aren't they? Food, cookery and pottery. And good healthy food. And good cooking and handmade pots yes yeah simonleachpottery.com and yeah we're running some workshops there we're running workshops which are going to be coming up in um, I think the first one is in the middle of April April, May and June we've got there at the moment so if you fancy a workshop uh, get in touch. We'll, we'll, we'll do some practicing together, yeah? <laughs> okay, on that note, keep practicing. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>